Welcome to our lecture online. Here in this video, we're going to explore a very strange, but very interesting and very useful mathematical entity called the Dirac Delta Function. Hmm, what is the Dirac Delta Function? Well, it's actually kind of strange and it's not actually a function because it's not really defined over all values of x. But we call it a function and also by itself, it really doesn't mean anything. So let's explore the definition of what a Dirac Delta function is. It is a function in quotation marks, because really it isn't a function, that is zero everywhere except at x equals zero, where it is infinite. Now notice that we have a 1D up there, because we're going to talk about the Dirac Delta function just in one dimension only. Once we get a feel for what it is in one dimension, we'll expand it to three dimensions. So by definition, we can take the integral of the Dirac Delta function from minus infinity to infinity, and that will equal 1. And that's the key to the definition. Now, does that definition really make sense? It really doesn't. So we just simply say we define it as such. Let me explain why it doesn't make sense. So here, the blue is the graphical representation of the Dirac Delta function. Notice that it's 0 for all values of x except for one value only. When x equals 0, the function, again in quotation marks, the function is infinite. Notice that line will go up to infinity, never stop. Just keep going in the y direction forever. So if we think about an integral, we know that the integral is equal to the area under the curve. So let's take the integral of this thing, area under the curve, while well, the area is equal to the width times the height. Well, it has zero width and infinite height, and somehow that product should equal 1. So we know that in traditional mathematics, that doesn't make any sense at all. We just need to get over that problem simply by ignoring that because really it is a function. It's just a definition. By definition, the integral of the delta function integrated from minus infinity to infinity equals 1. Well, we really don't need to go all the way to negative infinity and positive infinity. We can integrate it from minus 1 to 1, or from minus 0.1 to plus 0.1, or from minus a million to plus a million. It doesn't matter, as long as we include the one point at the origin where the Dirac Delta function is infinite. So, essentially, in algebra we can define it as 0 for all values of x that are not equal to 0, and infinite for the one value only when x equals 0. You might wonder, well, why in the world do we need something like that? Well, there is a reason why we need it, and will that become apparent later. We just need to get first familiar and comfortable with the concept. Again, don't think of the Dirac Delta function as a function. We just call it that because that's the name we gave it. It's not really a function. And by itself, the Dirac Delta function really has no meaning. But if we include it in an integral, then it does have meaning. And that will become apparent very quickly. So when we include it in some integral, for example, when we multiply the Dirac Delta function with another function, then we integrate, it does give you a very special meaning. So it does have relevance, it does have importance and usefulness, but like this, it's simply a definition. Think of it as a mathematical tool that will come in handy in certain circumstances. So, Stay tuned, and we'll show you where we use the Dirac Delta function. That is how it's done. Time for, <laughs> time for a doc to go for a walk, but she doesn't want to. <laughs> Come, on, go. Come, on. Come on, Tappy, let's go for a walk. 